What's up, everybody? The broadcast is live. We are here at Characters Welcome Headquarters, which is in several discreet locations around several parts of Brooklyn. I'm Justin Tyler. We got I'm Johnny Bander joining me over here. Hell yeah. Hello. Hello, world. Hello, world. Hello, confetti. What's up, John? Uh -huh. How are you? Thank you for jumping in here. I haven't oh seen you God. in a bit. I know. It's great. I'm doing amazing. So happy. I'm reading books, as you can see. Look at this guy me. with the books. Right I there. Know. Yep. Put them all there going top to bottom, right to left. Nice. Uh, yep. So you're so starting I'm, I'm with at... plant. Start with plant. <laughs> yeah, then man. Work your way down. Did you know how important those things are? Holy oh, shit. Man. I learned so much. Take a full hit of oxygen off that little uh, mm -hmm. cactus and then dive right into some heavy reading. Hell yeah, dude. Yeah, you know me. That's that's forty year old party. We got Stevie in the comments saying, "Whoa, whoa, whoa! It's Bander. That is a uh, fanfare." Um, Hell yeah! All right, whoa, whoa, whoa! Indeed. Thank you. I too would stop everything because I was surprised that it's me, but I know it's me. So we you knew it was you. You knew it was you the whole time. Uh, now, before we turned on the rectangles a couple seconds ago, uh, you were talking about how you are going to see a concert tomorrow night. Yeah. Uh, this is before we're going to get some characters in a second, but this is like, this is real life uh, nostalgia kicking. Yeah. In, in fact, I'm going to see four characters tomorrow. Uh, their names, I believe, are Tim Comerford, Black Brad Wilk. Don't uh, test yourself in this way. <laughs> And uh, uh, Tom Morello and Zach De La Roca, because I'm going to go see Rage Against the Machine tomorrow. Wow. For are they still raging as hard as they used to? Are they uh, at a large venue uh, performing? They are. They're at Madison Square Garden, and they're playing four shows. Now, there are some days in between, obviously, because... Rest days. You can't rage yeah, yeah, that yeah. many days in a row. You have to sleep yeah. against the machine. Uh, the, eat against the machine. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, meditate against the machine. I assume, you know, take supplements at this point against, against the, the machine. machine. Yes, yep, yeah. Yeah. Your, your yeah, showcase no. against the machine is full at this point. And uh, exactly. Yeah, yeah. 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 You got, you got your, <laughs> you got your, your seven day of the week pill jar against the machine. Yeah. That's uh, yeah. On Thursday night, it just says rage. Uh, that's mm -hmm. the rage. Rest against the machine says raise and delta, which is uh, that's the joke. That's the right joke to say at that time. Hell yeah, yeah. Uh, I I wanted to see them 22 years ago for the first time, and it got postponed. And then rage broke up, and now finally 22 years ago, I'm the exact same person I was then. Oh, I'm sure they are too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. How do those folks break up and get back together? They're just like uh, they want to earn money against the machine. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, well, Rage had eventually they reformed as the Prophets of Rage, with mm. um, or they reformed as Audio Slave. They reformed as uh, uh, the Prophets of Rage with Chuck D and uh, Be Real from Cypress Hill. So they wanted to get money. Zach De La Roca was like for a long time, like no, I'm not. And then he just remembered during the pandemic, like. He, Oh yeah, money. Let's do it. Oh yeah, money. Yeah. Oh, That's yeah, what money. you want from your counterculture of mm -hmm. fighting against the man band. Oh yeah, money. <laughs> That's the hidden track on their most recent album, right? <laughs> I would I would listen to it because I need that. <laughs> uh, rally around your accountant with a pocket full of cash. Uh, a shout out to <laughs> Phil Barton in the comments. Who the fuck is this guy? Um, this is our resident uh, and Phil uh, driving on the road. It seems right now. Be careful. Eyes up, Phil. Uh, this is Johnny Bander, a legend on the Characters Welcome YouTube page. Uh, shout out some of your hits, Johnny B. Oh, I got um, uh, your uh, it's uh, your your friend who just uh, told you, you did orgies. Uh, the Rock was my high school bully. Um, uh, Pray Mantis Dad, I think is that their Fat Eddie Vedder. Speaking of old, <laughs> yeah. old ones. <laughs> It's great. Uh, the beauty of Fat Eddie Vedder is it's just Pearl Jam, but he's singing about food. If I remember. he's just only singing about food, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that uh huh. I went real deep on that one. I love you. Love to see it. You love to see it. Uh huh. Uh huh. Um, I'm just coming back from being um, on vacation with the fam. 
uh, very happy to be home. I spent a lot of time uh, focused on the fam, a lot of sand in different uh, parts of the body. You can, yeah. I don't want to, I don't need to paint the picture any more than that. No, but you can't bring that sand back to New York. So no, that's, no, yeah. you get cursed. It's a curse. Mm -hmm. You have to pick every particle and mail it back at your own expense, as they say. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and those stamps are not getting cheaper, right? No, they are not. Not with this president. Great. We've officially hit the bar of saying old person things. So now we have uh -huh. to move on with some characters. Are you guys ready? Hell yeah. Play? Let's do it. The best damn characters on the planet on this show. Um, let's send out our first. Uh, you know, when you're at this time, like we're talking about, it's hard to own a small business. So I'm very, we oh, like yeah. to feature a small business owner every week. Uh, I mm -hmm. dare you to go back mm -hmm. and pick out who that is in any other show. But please welcome out to the rectangle tangles the owner and manager owner and of, manager of the ice, of the ice house, house cafe cafe. Hello and welcome to the Ice House Cafe, located right here in beautiful City Island, New York, right off of the I-95 Expressway. Now proudly serving bereavement lunch for all your bereavement lunch needs. Say you invite your associate out on the water for a little uh, doodle around a bay, but he starts <laughs> acting funny, huh? Starts complaining you didn't pay him enough for that last job he had. Well, one thing leads to the next and boom! <laughs> You find yourself returning to the marina one man short. And, you're hoping, huh? and it happens to be between the hours of 12 to 3 p.m. Monday through Friday. Come on down to the Ice House Cafe for a hot and delicious bereavement lunch. No questions asked. <laughs> you, like powder? you come to the right place. Every first Tuesday of the month, Bobby Big Balls works his magic on the burners, cooking up the most delicious clam chowder you ever tasted, bursting with creamy nutrients. Now available in takeout orders, perfect for any last meal requests. <laughs> Say it's your grandma's birthday, huh? And you want to take her out for a nice romantic ride on the water, huh? Everything's going great till she opens up that yapper of hers and starts complaining about how you're not paying her enough attention and how she has the peace of mind to go rat to your wife about the little rendezvous the two of you has been having. Well, one thing leads to the next and uh, you suddenly find yourself coordinating a new sleeping arrangement right next to the fishies for your new uh, lady friend, if you know what I mean. <laughs> you come back to the marina and you suddenly recall you had forgotten to eat lunch that day. Hmm? <laughs> and it just so happens to be between the hours of 12 to 3 p.m. Monday through Friday. Might as well come on down to the Ice House Cafe. We are not a front. <laughs> Excuse me, one moment. What did I tell you? Huh? You chop off the head first so the body doesn't struggle. <laughs> <laughs> Do you have a particular fondness for animals and animal-like products? Look no further. We got you covered. We here at the Ice House Cafe proudly offer a large array of vegetarian and vegan options for all you jamooks out there afraid of eating a little meat. And if you come <laughs> in on the day of your daughter's communion, all our tofu sandwiches come with a side of sweet peppers and a complimentary handgun. <laughs> Let's say... The big boss wants to take you out for a little spin on the water, huh? Says he has something to discuss with you in private. So you get up on the boat and suddenly you find yourself in the unfortunate predicament of being surrounded by 12 of your closest colleagues holding guns to your head, informing you that they know you've been ratting on them to the feds. <laughs> so you get on your hands and knees and you start saying your Hail Marys when suddenly you hear one of your colleagues' bellies start grumbling. You look down at your watch and realize, hey, it happens to be between the hours of 12 to 3 p.m. Monday through Friday. Perfect time <laughs> to go on down to the Ice House Cafe. Now offering mortuary and crematory services in a back by my beautiful daughter, Rita. And a salad <laughs> bar, too. So if you're looking for your next or last meal, look no further. Ice House Cafe. Closed on Sunday for the Lord. <laughs> Yes, for the Lord, the Lord himself. Uh, 
Pita Plots, everybody. Pretty Ooh. nuts. Um, <laughs> I, I actually, I, I worked with a Bobby Big Balls uh, oh, back nice. in my restaurant days. So maybe um, the same guy. He was oh, great at soups. Yeah, he <laughs> uh, makes the creamiest of clam chowders. Oh, definitely. <laughs> um, uh, how are you, Dina? What what brought this know. character to life for you? Are you uh, uh, mob a adjacent? Uh, yes, it's a real life story. Um, my family has a boat because we're bougie and we did stop at the Ice House Cafe. This is a real place. I shouldn't say that. Um, <laughs> and we really do have bereavement lunches. Um, so what happened was we went away and we just started improvising, me and my whole family. And uh, here we are a few years later. <laughs> Boom. Oh, I love that shared wow. family writing credit. Yeah, yeah. Uh, can you tell us where this is, or are you worried about it? Um, it's not in City Island, but it is in the same borough of City Island, and I'll leave uh, it at that. Mm -hmm. I got you. Um, I, interesting you said it's not on City Island. Though. Right, because <laughs> I needed to change up the location just mm -hmm. a tiny bit. So uh, That's where the – City Island's where the ambush is. Right, right, right. If you right, go right. Exactly. Yeah, The yeah. back door. <laughs> yeah. uh, that's very fun. Um do you frequent City Island? I've been to City Island. This is very New york -y, but it's like a small New England town. Yeah. It's also a part of New York City. Yeah, it's a it's a weird place of, of lobsters and mafioso and people from the Bronx that want to just get away and have be around water. Um, it's not the fanciest of locations, but it's mm. a beautiful setting. But that's what makes it, you know, very interesting to see all the interesting people that go there. So... Yeah, it's like 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 what firefighters like think is fancy, right? It's right. Like, yes, it's a very blue yeah. collar, like it's all like, you can eat lobster for five ninety nine type of thing. Yeah, and then like five beers in an after like right before right. like four o'clock, and you're like, yeah, that's it. That's what life is. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. vacation right there. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, exactly. Dina, what have you been up to this summer? What are you doing uh, to get around water, like you were saying? Um, so I've been, um, I, I, I was in Law and Order. I had one line in Law and Order Ooh. recently. Hey. What was the one? Can I ask what the line was? Yeah, you allowed was, to do the line? Um, I did. It. Right. And the thing is, is that nowhere in the script did it say she was Russian, but I decided to give her a Russian accent. <laughs> <laughs> can you just roll up with an accent? I literally wow, was I like, that. can I do this? He's okay. And, he's, and he didn't give a shit because I had one line. So I meant nothing to the director. But I decided I was the star. Um, oh, I love that. And I actually created another monologue based on my experience of. So real life really helps with, uh, wow. with, with writing. I, I look forward to that. And are you are you're a witness to some sort of crime? Um, I I let the police people in to a fancy house, um, and he is one of the uh, potential criminals, but he turns out not to be. But he happens no, to- Don't spoil any. Don't spoil any of the episodes. Sorry. They're going to come for you. Yeah, I know. They're yeah. Sure. Mariska, Mariska is after me already. But um, but yeah, it's, uh, it was fun, and I shot a commercial recently, so I've had weird, weird luck and writing. Oh, yeah. Life. So it's been fun. That's awesome. Thank That's you. great. Uh, summer success. Yes. Hard to come by. Hard to come by. It's true. It's true for sure. And fall and spring and winter. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Pretty much you all feel especially are. present now <laughs> yeah, yeah. to talk about failing in the summer. Because it is summer. Right, right, Dina, right. did you throw a uh, did you throw a Russian accent into the commercial? I didn't, sadly. I was playing oh. overworked mom. So I didn't mm, I just had to do a Russian. lot of like what yes. a Russian thing over I Yeah, have. absolutely. I, I did a lot of like, oh, but that's all the years of acting has led me to, to that. So it's been great. <laughs> yeah, that's, that was good. That funny. lip flap yeah. said yeah. over yeah. the years. She's tired. Uh -huh. She's tired. I learned it yeah. in my Shakespeare classes. So it's <laughs> classically trained. Classically mm -hmm, trained. Mm -hmm. Still, I uh, also went to school for theater, and uh, the oh. Alexander technique I'm using on an almost oh, daily yeah. basis is. Trained. Oh, I can imagine. I can tell. I can see it. I can see it in your work. You, yeah. Oh, thank you. <laughs> what a huge <laughs> misconception. We all go to school for theater, and we think, okay, I'm going to use all this stuff. And you're like, oh, I don't use any of this. Could right. you teach me how to audition for something? Oh, that's not part of the audition. <laughs> right, 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 right. Okay, well, bye. <laughs> okay. Oh, improv, the whole thing? So there's no script? It's just based uh -huh. on what I think in my head? Cool, cool, cool. Yeah. That's nice. Uh, Dina, anything you want to plug um, here um, while we have you? I mean, you've plugged Law & Order. 
uh, yes. Sure, absolutely. A, a brawny uh, commercial. Show. I am the brawny, but that hasn't come out yet. Um, nice. I'm I'm working on. I'm writing a pilot, but it's probably going to take a long time. Uh, but be, listen, I love the confidence of plugging a pilot. You're currently yes, writing. Oh yeah. Actually, we just finished. It's three like, scenes, but that's it. That's like Julia Fox plugging her book. Yes, yes, yes. Is, like, it's I already don't speak a masterpiece. On a masterpiece. Yeah. yeah, but it's. <laughs> Um, yeah, that's pretty much it. Lots of auditions and, uh, that's my life. So that's that's awesome. Yes. That's my life is the best way to end a plug. Right. Uh, <laughs> Dina, thank you for being here. Thank um, you so much. We'll Thanks see you. Come me. back, bring your, uh, your law and order. I would piece. love to. I would love to. That'd be great. <laughs> thank you Have so much. One. Thanks. Bye everyone. Later. Yeah. Bye. Oh man. Hell yeah. Yeah. That's a, the confidence of bringing an accent to, uh, a one line part. I oh my I, god, especially like being like hello to this big house. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, mm, like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> mm. That look at that definitely that's, Russian. That's, that's there. That yeah. That that's like if I had said like, um, you know, I, shit. What did I do? I had like one line. Oh, I was like uh, an episode of Kimmy Schmidt or something. If I had been like. Uh, I'm uh, I'm uh, transracial, you dumb dick. <laughs> Good. This is actually my line, yeah. I was going to say, that feels specific enough um, that mm -hmm. that would be uh, real life from an Kimmy Schmidt, man, a show that was such a thing and then sort of faded out like a lot of streaming shows. You know? Uh-huh. Yeah. Well, <laughs> I, I, oh, actually, can I give a little, little trivia thing Please. really quick for that? So that was my first ever, this is in 2016. It was my first ever like gig or whatever being on set. And it was, I think that's true. Um, but, you know, you guys, as you were saying, you went to acting school, but I never mm -hmm. went to acting school or anything. Mm -hmm. So after Titus does this show, we we're supposed to be like, oh, he's so good or whatever. Oh, like that's the audience. And <laughs> there's a moment where if you watch in the, show like you can watch me just everyone else was like oh good you know and i just mouth like that was so good <laughs> he was so good so if you turn on if you see there's a part where i was like so good like so that's blatantly yeah you know you got to put it out there as long as everyone's not doing that i i buy it i was a i was a very math so i was a computer science person so to me it's like you want someone to know they were good you you turn to them and you say so good, yeah. very yeah. Scientist famous compliment, as we all know. <laughs> yes, yes. Uh, we should say like if you uh, if you're liking what you're seeing here, throw us some cash up to our business Venmo. Yes, we're gathering together some funds to get Johnny Bander here into some sort of acting program. Yes, uh, just to sharpen the skills because uh, it feels like um, on the heels of the Kimmy Schmidt credit, like we're ready to go here. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah, we, we got to get going. And, we, <laughs> and the, obviously working on some monologues, Shakespeare, uh, the only ones that matter. Um, but hit us up on the Venmo, at Characters yes. Welcome. Whatever mm -hmm. comment you put in the Venmo, we will read here aloud. Uh, if you have some notes on any of our acting choices, the mm -hmm. two of us, uh, everyone else's choices are great. Uh, ours are the ones that deserve mm -hmm. some light commentary. Uh, but yes. please uh, hit us up with some cash and we will read what you have to say. Uh, but in the meantime, shall we um, get into our next character piece? Uh, I would love to, but I think, oh man, I think I have to go. Uh, oh man, oh, you I have have to get under the desk real quick. Yeah, sorry. Okay. Oh great. Well, that's that's a normal co-host thing to just have other stuff to do while it's yeah, happening. Yeah, sorry. Um, a lot of times, just one Eric, sec. Yeah, totally. Um, a lot of time, Eric just vanishes. Oh, there he goes, and now he's gone. Uh, great. Um, I think, uh, though, I it is the right time to introduce our next piece, unrelated to what uh, John Bander's talking about. You know, in the magazine world, it's it's a struggle. It's hard to succeed in a dying art form, not like this cutting edge live stream shit that we're doing. Uh, so let's welcome out our uh, next guest uh, to the rectangles. Please welcome a New Yorker contributor. <laughs> Hmm. Oh, I'm writing a piece for the New Yorker. 
Ah, uh, let's see. What dry witticism awaits the public today? <laughs> Ooh, I know. Ooh, two other things the FBI found in Donald Trump's home in Mar-a-Lago. <gasps> A love letter from Vladimir Putin and an order form for the world's tiniest gloves. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm so funny. Isn't that right, Chamomile? Hmm. <laughs> ah, mm. You know, Chamomile, I was actually voted the funniest person to ever have been on Jeffrey Epstein's plane, but haven't done anything. <laughs> Take that, Alan Dershowitz. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Oh, God, I wish someone, someday I hope, Chamomile, that someone calls me the greatest compliment you could ever get, a humorist. Like, uh, <laughs> like the two great Davids, Sedaris and Barry, and of course, Andy <laughs> Barowitz. <sighs> okay, back to it. Oh, I'm writing a piece for the New Yorker. <laughs> Let's hope this one's a shout, not a murmur. <laughs> uh, new college admissions requirements. Uh, essays about your biggest adversity during a protest. And instead of SAT scores, Wordle scores. <laughs> Send. Oh. oh, chamomile. Have you ever met anyone so, so, so funny? Ah, you know, uh, someone once called me not funny, but I guess they didn't read my last piece. Uh, have you guys met my new girlfriend? She's my anxiety. <laughs> <laughs> mm. You know, I tried meme writing once, but it was all, you know, I don't really get memes. Mine were sort of like when your red wine and antidepressant interact, you know, or uh, PJ Rourke just e PJ Rourke just hits different. Uh, <laughs> didn't really take off, but I tried it. <laughs> Isn't that what life's about? <sighs> you know, Chamomile, I was actually voted the funniest person in Maine, except for that one. <laughs> except for that one serial killer who does a knock knock joke, and then the answer is always caving your head in. <laughs> Other than him. <laughs> Mm. Ah. Ooh. <laughs> Let's fire off one more. Oh, I'm writing a piece for the New Yorker. <laughs> oh, here we go. How to have a hot introvert summer. <laughs> the hot fashion item, wearing your blanket all day. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, it's nice to be writing humor again, chamomile after the pandemic. Before that, all I was writing was Hillary Clinton fan fiction, she, where she always won, both in politics and in sports. She played every sport in my series. She was like Air Bud. <laughs> mm. ah. Well, I guess... I guess that's it. That's really all the drollness that this world can take. What's that, Chamomile? <laughs> you didn't laugh. What the hell is a laugh? <laughs> Look at this glistering takedown from Johnny <laughs> Vander, uh, co-host and New Yorker uh, mm -hmm. dilettante. Yes, dilettante. Absolutely. Uh, uh, just a, a rake that I am. A, uh, a, a critic, you know, the, uh, the, the, the true New Yorker uh, reader cartoons within and not ah. without. <laughs> I mean, I would argue that every New Yorker reader is like, I could do the cartoons. Uh-huh. Yeah, yeah, I yeah. could do the doodles. Mm-hmm. Everyone because thinks they... that. They seem so simple, the drawing part, because they're yeah, just yeah, like yeah. little lines. They're doodles. And uh -huh. then uh, right in one little joke, everyone's like, I've got a joke. I made the barista laugh the other day. <laughs> well, that's it. I mean, the key to like a, a New Yorker cartoon is like, all right, where should this therapist be? Mm. Uh, and then it's like yeah. space. Yeah. Oh, that's okay. good. What if the therapist was sitting on the couch? Ooh. Because I, that's, I just... that's 
that's the flip. That's the thing. That's, that's the kind that's of main stuff that you were talking about. That main incredible. Yeah. yeah. That's the kind of thing that like, if I was truly, if I was, I would have to stop spreading blueberry preserves on my toasted muffin. Cause I'd be laughing so hard yeah. at that. I, I can't tr truly. Yeah. I would have to leave uh, a uh, like, I would have to leave the the live rendition of the Lincoln Douglas debates that I was at because <laughs> wow. I would be, uh, I'd be too stimulated. Too stimulated. Definitely something I say every time I say <laughs> Yeah. Um, wow. All my senses have just been engaged with here in this <laughs> uh, tome of the current. I have some mm -hmm. pictures that I'll send over to. Um, Shout yeah. Yeah. Out. Yeah. Definitely please. please. Obviously like, you know, the editor is the most important part. Everybody knows, like, yeah. you know, come on. Um, we all want to win the contest. We all, you know, I'm writing something for the New Yorker or not for the New Yorker for, for like a daily shout or something. That's why I hate it so much. We hate what we are. And so, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. A hundred percent. I mean, mm -hmm. isn't it, isn't it funny though? Also like we always come, you're coming up in comedy. You're like, I'm going to be the funniest. I'm going to be the fun. Everything I do, I'm going to be the funniest. And then when you like get into like the marketplace of like getting paid to do any sort of comedy work, it's never about being the funniest. It's about, yeah. I, we need a joke that fits right into this little keyhole. And mm -hmm. in the New Yorker's case, it's like something that is like uh, a, a cultural observation that is, you know, about high culture um, that maybe that is original, but also accessible. If that, if you had to define it. Exactly. Something I could read at a doctor's office and not and enjoy, but not disturb anyone. Ah, yes. The quiet internal laugh. But I, I think that's such a, we were talking about like how acting school doesn't prepare you for any mm -hmm. sort of career, actual career in acting. Com the comedy we did all coming up. Because we should say, John was one of the first people I met in New York. Along yeah. With Michael Harding. We arrived, I feel like, sort of about the same time. Basically um, the same time, yeah. And I I we're out there. I remember bouncing around town with you after seeing a show, I think, at UCB. Mm -hmm. um, like, truly, like, I want to say almost like 18 years ago, 17 Pro years ago. It's probably got to be around there. Like, yeah, we it had, had to have seen like a 11 o'clock show or whatever. Like, yeah, I probably saw uh, like your balls in a show like in a Tyrus show or something. And then we probably were like, hey, wasn't that great? Yeah, it was great. Yeah, cool. That was like, <laughs> that's the kind of brave stuff we really need to. That's exactly. You were like, wow, look at this brave, classically trained <laughs> performer who's able to just put his balls on the line. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Um, the kind of stuff that truly no one wants to see. Well, no one wants to see it then and no one ever wants to see it now. Disagree uh, about one part of that. Uh. <laughs> say no more say no uh -huh, more uh -huh. um that's great well i'll see you i'm looking forward to your next doodle um in in the the new yorker mm -hmm, mm -hmm. uh so uh oh i do have a a, a comment from carly zeisler uh, mm -hmm. drops in some cash into the Venmo, the business Venmo, and uh, comments, I just want to hear you, your guys' Russian accent. Oh, okay. Um, so, like, uh, feel free, as if we're walking onto the Law and Order set and uh, saying, like, Dos Vidonia, welcome to my bagel store. Yeah. I, I have not killed anyone. <laughs> 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 that's you really that was sort of a dark that's sort of a, a russian who'd seen some shit yeah, I, <laughs> I like that idea because he would have been like i have not killed anyone and we were like we asked you like yeah where are you is, yeah <laughs> we asked you like what kind of drinks you make here <laughs> uh great uh like people shouting out um air Bud as a reference in your piece um uh raisin delta says air bud was literally a movie based around the actual dog air buddy who was trained in sports sadly he died a year after the first movie came out wow heartbreaking wow. turn he didn't get to see the links of popularity or the kids that he had on oh screen my god i mean 
truly never even knew he was a seven sport athlete or whatever. Uh, the the idea that Air Bud was a real like sort of a true story in a way mm-hmm, is mm-hmm. Uh, hilarious to me. It's quoted as the most like nonsensy movie pitch that someone was like, "What if the dog played sports?" And then uh, back it was made in a time when movies could just be that. Um, and then there's a guy there who's like, these movies are not authentic to that dog that I saw play basketball. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I, I gotta take this franchise over. I know Airbud, and you, <laughs> sir, you canine are no Airbud. I played against Airbud in the state finals. I he crushed me. He dunked all over me. Uh, these are the true stories we're investigating. Um what do you say we welcome out our next? Uh, I'm have, crying, have so we gotta. Good, yeah. Uh, we're crying, we're sweating. Um, it's a beautiful mm-hmm. time of year to be in New York City, of which we both, you're in New York too, right? Are you in New Jersey? I'm in Jersey City, just across Jersey the river. Same City. weather though. Is it? Is it a same? I thought there was like an ISO bar or some sort of. Um, um, no, we're, we're climb. building it. You know, yeah. thanks to Build Back Better or whatever, now we're gonna get to build it. But you guys have Jägermeister rain in Jersey City, if I remember correctly. Is that- yeah, it rains. Uh, it rains uh, uh, sleeveless t-shirts no. and uh, <laughs> and uh, Jaeger. Yeah. That's when will science is. crack a cloud that can rain sleeves to help the poor beleaguered people of Jersey City with their sunburned yeah. shoulders? <laughs> you know, you, you play the hand you're dealt. Yeah, it's true. Let's talk about our next performer. Um, uh, very exciting. To- um, the, uh, we have a, a character set. This is a character set. So you're going to see a bunch of characters sort of in a stack here. Uh, yeah. so please welcome out a character set, starting with a bar mitzvah, bar mitzvah hype, hype guy. guy. Hey, what's up party people? Mazel tov to my boy, Zach. Oh, excuse me. My man, Zach. All right. Uh, guys, we're going to keep the party going and uh, really get the dancing started in just a second. But first, our awesome hosts, the Schwartzes, uh, wanted me to go over a couple ground rules before we get out on the dance floor. Okay, so check it out. Okay, guys, listen up. Rule one, this party's all about fun. So come on, move your body, dance with everyone. Rule two, don't tease Zach, please. He has Cushing's disease, and that's why he's obese. Rule three, the thing with Cushing's disease is it's impossible to cure. We can only treat. Rule four, I can't really say more, but just imagine if you couldn't see Zach anymore. What would you want to say if you still had the chance? You might even want to kiss him. Jenny Rosenberg. Just a thought. All right, and rule five, this one's just for the guys. If you start to get a boner, tuck it up on your thigh. All right. <laughs> this next character is a dog businessman. Wow, it's just like Air Bud. Exactly. <laughs> what a setup. Paul, thanks for coming in. I'm Tim Dogman. Yeah, Dogman. The D O G M A N, like dog man, which I am. Can I offer you something? <laughs> drink? Glass of water? No? Suit yourself. <laughs> it's the spot. So, Paul, tell me a little about your background. Uh huh. Oh, very impressive. Uh-huh. I know Charlie. Uh huh. I'm listening, Paul. <laughs> hey, Paul. 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 Look. Look. Who is that? Water delivery. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Forgot we do that. Well, uh, you seem like a good candidate, Paul, but I've been burned in the past. Pardon the expression, but a car ride always sounds great until you realize you're going to the vet. Am I right? <laughs> you mind if I, um, just take a minute to think about it. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? I like the smell of your butt. You're hired. <laughs> you to Tracy in HR. She'll get you set up with all your paperwork. She is currently on her period, but I'm sure you smelled that. And then uh, <laughs> let's you and me go for a walk. Meet you in the lobby in 10? Great. Oh, and Paul, 
you'll be needing one of these. <laughs> hey, is everybody having fun? All Yay! right. I hope everybody's trying to call here because this party's off the hook. Am I right? All right. Cool. Cool. <laughs> Um, so guys, um, our awesome host, the Schwartzes just wanted me to, um, give everybody an update on a couple issues that have cropped up in the last 10 minutes or so. Okay. Uh, these are hundred percent real. So check it out. Okay. Here we go. Y'all issue one. Zach's location is unclear right now, and that's not good, son. Issue two, to find Zach, we need you to search the property and help us find our dude. Issue three, these are the meds that Zach needs in the following order, two pink, blue, and then green. Issue four, we got to get out the door because if Zach is passed out, then time is running short. Issue five, it's 7.05. Zach needs to take these in 15 minutes, so let's look alive, okay? Roll out, roll out right now. Fan out. Let's go. Okay, come on. <laughs> and this is a guidance counselor. Just like Air Bud. Just like Air Bud. <laughs> hey, Madison, have a seat. I asked to speak to you today because I see a kid whose grades have taken a sudden tumble, who quit marching band out of the blue, and who frankly just... Seems a little lost. Now, I know you think no one understands what you're going through, but believe it or not, I was in high school too once, back in the Triassic period. So come on, <laughs> tell me what's up. I promise it's nothing I haven't ever heard before. Uh -huh. I thought Grinder was for men. <laughs> How much older? Addicted to white girls? <laughs> Started out as a threesome. The Daytona Beach La Quinta? How much money? So all you do is pee. Turn into a foursome. But are your prints on the weapon? Where's the bag now? My car. How did you... The next 30 minutes? I'm getting a call. Uh-huh. Puerto Nuevo? We're on the beach. So all I do is pee. <laughs> uh, so good. Back to. Yes. Thrilling conclusion. The drama is built. Hey guys. Um, everybody stop. Stop looking. We, we found Zach. Um, the, our awesome hosts, the Schwartzes, are out with the ambulance right now, but uh, they asked me to say a few words, so here we go. Check it out. Okay, a few words. Word one. Just now at 7.01, Zach did pass away. We got confirmation. Word two. Shout out to Stephen and Drew, who found Zach slumped over in the photo booth. Word three. Services for Big Z will be at Temple Beth Bell sometime later this week. Word four. It's hard to be sure, but the photo suggests Zach was in pain right before. Word five. I know if Zach were alive, he'd want everyone here to still have a good time. So let's get out there and play Coke and Pepsi, okay, guys? Come on. Let's do it for Big Z. Woo! <laughs> Travis winning to everybody uh, with uh, fantastic pieces. I mean, shout out um, uh, Firepaw Cooper says, I hope this never ends. Uh, mm -hmm. Phil Barton over on Facebook. Oh. Uh, if we could see Phil Barton's uh, Jorge, uh, there's he's excited about this. Um, and he said earlier that he was fucked up. So I think that explains the spelling errors, but not the lack of taste because he loves mm -hmm. this shit. People need this in their life. Wait, I, 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 oh yeah, I was looking at the uh, comments. I can't. No, get out of your comments. Talk to, to right us. Now. Okay. Thomas, no, the, uh, the hype is real. You don't it's have real. to be caught up in It's game. real. No, guys, it's the comments tell me everything I need to know. So, well, <laughs> let me summarize. It, in two minutes, Phil Barton went from fucks Paul 
to yeah. <laughs> somebody get this guy to America's Got Cal Talent. Fuck, people need this in their life. Hey, that's, that's, that's cool. transformative. That's the win and move. Yeah. Wow. I like, yeah, I like to make people first really not like it. And then so I can bring them, bring them further, you know, from a low point. That's, mm -hmm. that's the genius of it. You know, yeah. anyone could start at zero. You take people low and then bring them high. That's right. Uh, both um, skills. Bander, uh, Bander, Bander, I will, I will have to admit, helped me write uh, a couple lines in that bar mitzvah bit. Uh, in his, uh, in one of his many random apartments <laughs> in Manhattan. <laughs> yes. Uh, oh, hilarious. Before, before you became a Jersey City guy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes, and we all are mourning the loss of John Bader yeah. as a person it's true. in I our am. lives. Because yeah. this is the only time we see him. Jersey City well, is uh, too far away. I know. Yeah. I mean, most of the time he's on the road, so. It's true. It's true. Actually, yeah, Thomas uh, used to live very close to where I lived. Yeah. So... We would uh, we would run into each other before that being, part. Miss that part, Mister Runner is so fun. I and love it. Makes impossibly dark <laughs> over the oh, course. Oh yeah! Of oh yeah! Uh, I love. I, how did give us the breakdown of how you uh, put that together? Because that is um, that would be something I'd be like, nah, the kid's gonna die at the end, and I'd be like, wait, you can't do that. But yeah, it works. Um, it's amazing. Thanks. Well, I guess it it. Um, it's just the 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 goofy beat really helps it like this sort of like corny you know rap beat um and it's just that that you know it's like the, all the verses are the same thing so it can get a little samey i think that really that that made it so that it was it would really work better as like you know to break it up and then i don't know just writing it um yeah it just seemed like the funniest place to take it was uh to, to have it be sort of a, a runner that that pops in and out um but uh, but yeah, but thanks for letting me do the weird uh, multi multi character thing. I just that's the only way I could I could figure out to do the the three beats. No, it's it's awesome, and like honestly, it tied into um, a sort of very targeted comment here that I want to read from Raisin Delta. Oh, Air Buddy died of cancer a couple months after his right leg was amputated, mm. but he died peacefully in his sleep, unlike Zach. That's right. That's right. <laughs> it really makes you think. Yes. Mm -hmm. The photos from the photo booth did suggest that he was in pain right before he died. <laughs> when you say it without the beat, it's just sad. Yeah, yeah. I know. Yeah, uh, yeah. That's I love. That's where the Law and Order sign drops as mm, sound effect right. drops in. Is right, because mm. that's a great episode. Mm. I love so much that the uh, that, that the amazing. family the family really wanted you to, you know, say something, uh -huh. and then the beat drops. I love. I love that they were. <laughs> <laughs> there it is. Yeah. There it is. There we go. Yeah. There um, we go. Yeah. They really spent a lot of money on this bar mitzvah. Yeah. You got to finish celebrating. It's, so. yeah. You know what? It's like you, you got those because having, you got those inflatable saxophones for people in the big glasses and stuff for a bar mitzvah party. You got to yeah. use them. That's a given. Yeah. 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 So, but then, yeah. yeah. But if you, yeah. You, you also have, yeah, the DJ. And if you're really, if you're really out there, you get the hype guy. Uh -huh. Uh, uh -huh. Years ago, I once one of the better paying jobs I had back uh, when I was still um, uh, hustling. It was a Amy Height, if you remember her, and I were um, we played Seth Meyers and uh, Amy Poehler in a bar mitzvah video segment of like really for this kid's life. <laughs> And so we had to wow. do we had, they like we met with the parents and they told us about the kid but they didn't want us to know their names because they were like rich and secretive so we, we had all these pictures of him but couldn't learn enough about him to identify him in the google and by googling him they were so we had to, were they were that you would um like broadcast that they were doing this or something like they were something where they were just they were protective of their identities in general so it was okay. like all this subterfuge to meet them and they were like, we want it needs to be about him, but you can never learn his last name or his oh main interests. And so we were like, oh, this god. is a crazy nightmare that you put us oh in. Oh my god. Yeah. Rothschild. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. I, I know I, I never I never uh, I know these these gigs like I I never did a bar mitzvah gig, um, but they it does sound cool. I sometimes like get nostalgic for um the crazy things that yeah before you know 
before we before we grew up and became professionals like we are now. Now that we're pros. Yeah. Uh, speaking of that, Thomas, what have you been up to lately? This hot, hot summer. What yeah, have you been yeah. Well, you can see I'm I'm sweating. Um, I uh have been. What did I do? I uh, I did another SNL audition. Um, I went out nice. to for a while. Yeah, I saw my brother. Uh, did not do any any anything entertainment or work related in LA. Um, but just my brother lives there, and he's getting married, so that's exciting. That's and, cool. Um, yeah, that's great. Uh, and then, um, yeah, Jen, my wife is writing a book, so mm. I'm um, editing that. Um, <laughs> leads a lot of work. <laughs> is she can she hear you? Is she in the room? With yeah, you right she's, now? she's here. Yeah. What are you starting to say? Uh -huh. <laughs> like um, a very hostage, like you're about to hold up a newspaper. Yeah, no. no. <laughs> <laughs> I have not seen a murder. <laughs> the book is good. The book is good. Um, there, now we go. We'll cut that part out. Yeah, of no. Uh, yeah, so, so you know. Not, not too much. Your wife's in the comments, by the way, also, so watch out. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Uh, by the way, her other book is, like, right here somewhere. There it is. Yeah. Look at that. Right there, I think. Yeah. Nice. Proof positive. Yes. That's her, a Ken Spira, big time. Very, very funny. Forward by Stephen yeah. Colbert. Check it out. Great. Um, yeah, but, uh, yeah, I, 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 this is, I'm, I'm embarrassed to say, Justin, I have not watched, um, the party week show yet, but, uh, uh, this oh, show, yeah. I've been working on 101, 101 places to party before I die. Yes. Before you die. Yes. yes. Uh, yep. Uh, it's on, uh, 1030 every Thursday night on true TV. It's a great show hosted by Anna Pally and John Gabris. Uh, I spent the first half of this year traveling around, um, working on that show. Incredible. Um, I turned your uh, Matt sort of not a compliment into a plug. How about that? <laughs> yeah, that, thank you. Well, thank, no, you. thank you. Thank you. Well, you you acknowledged there was not exactly a compliment. I said I hadn't watched it yet. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we'll get there. We'll get there. We'll get there. Save it. Yeah, eventually, you'll be able to point on a tiny TV behind you that the show mm -hmm. is airing, like right there. That's a tiny TV. Right. Uh, Jen in the comments. Oh, thank you for the shout out, boys. With a Z, she gets Hell us. Yeah. Hell yeah. Um, anything else you want to plug? Uh, Thomas, it's always a pleasure to have you here. Guys, I love you guys. Um, always fun. No, I have nothing to plug. I'm a slug. Great. Plug, you plug. Uh, yep. If you don't plug, you slug. Get out of mm -hmm. here, you slug. <laughs> Get the fuck. Get the fuck out of here, you slug. Uh, great Slugging. to see you, Thomas. Hope to see you yeah. in person one of these days. We had a great time at the bar a couple months ago until you, I think you got COVID right That's after right. That. True story. I got COVID uh, that night at the bar, and Jen got mad at me for um, she because there was a picture, there was evidence of me lying on the floor in the bar. Yeah, so. and COVID, as we know, is a low-lying disease. Yeah, it yeah. floats close to the ground. Yeah, That's why but, shorties are getting it. I also took a great picture of the hosts of Characters Welcome, which uh, I've seen splashed all over social media. We should be giving you our photo pit. Well, I, I have I have gotten it, actually, which I'm very proud of. So. Okay, great. That's great. All right. Awesome. Wow. Great to see you. See you soon. See you soon, guys. Uh, see later. you, buddy. Uh, uh, Thomas, such a great, such great pieces. Great man. Great, great comedian. Um, and great pecs, according to Jen. Wife. Okay, yeah. Slug with she would know. Yeah, mm -hmm. she would know. I know she's mm -hmm. got you know that what? mannequin man. A slug with pecs, also a great New Yorker cartoon. Uh -oh. uh -huh. <laughs> Look at you! Uh -huh. You were uh -huh. just doing a, a takedown of New Yorker. You're subtly soliciting pitches um, you know from what? our studio audience. It's it's you might have you might have heard this. You might have said it. Oh, I hate that thing, but I will absolutely work for it in any capacity and or please, please hire me. Please, please hire me. Uh -huh. It's basically our mantra. And in the name of that, let's move on to our next character. Yep. That's our mantra. That's our mantra. Uh-huh. Uh, let's, so. let's definitely do that. Oh, you know what? Why don't I, why don't I do that? Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, you know what? Yeah, we just, I, I feel like we've been making you do all the work, all the time, yeah, and out. here I am, my, you know, yeah, I'm like Air Dud over here. Wow. <laughs> wow. Um, also famously uh, died of a leg, dog leg cancer. <laughs> Don't Google Air Dud. 
if you're not uh-huh. going to be Blair Butt. Uh huh. Yep. Well, you know who doesn't have dog leg cancer is our next character. Because man, yeah. you know, we've been. Well, I will say one thing that is a dog leg cancer to America is has been, as we all know, the January sixth insurrection. <laughs> You can't wow. call it anything else, right? Well, no, that's just what people say. Right. Everybody knows that, right? Yeah. But, you know, some everybody's like, that's all done, right? But yeah. maybe it isn't. Maybe oh, wow. it isn't. You know, you never know. Because that's great. What, I, what do you say we, uh, we check in with someone? In fact, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome our next character. The last insurrection is still hiding in the Capitol building. Ooh. This is the war journal of Tony DeLong, aka the Q Wordly Lion, the second lieutenant in the QAnon Testoster Tonys. It's day 216 of my siege on the Capitol building. I'm still in here. Everybody left like immediately after January 6th uh, when everyone took a bunch of selfies and pissed on Tom. Tim Kaine's laptop and all that. We got the fun part out of the way. But I thought we were in it for the long haul here, folks. So I'm hiding in this weird kitchen, praying that Diane Feinstein is too old to notice people. So far, so good. When I ran to the Capitol, I was like, it's the storm, QAnon is right, let's bring the pedophiles to justice. But now I'm like, government buildings are confusing. You can fool people by pretending to be a statue. And Ted Cruz farts. Constantly. Let me be honest, I'm struggling here. My revolutionary fur is really starting to chafe. I haven't changed my thunderwear in nine months, and granted, <laughs> the first month is on me because it's only been eight. Um, I'm suddenly way behind on The Bachelor. Is Matt as nice as he seems? <laughs> Don't spoil it. Say nothing. It's been hard to find food. I've subsisted exclusively on sour cream and onion chips that fall out of Rand Paul's mouth, which is surprisingly like a lot. The guy eats like a cookie monster. He just throws food in his face and chews randomly. It's just flying everywhere. I had to move constantly. I spent a week in disguise as Chuck Grassley's dog. I didn't even have to wear a costume. He just doesn't know what's going on. All I had to do was occasionally lick peanut butter off of his nipples and out of his butthole, of course. I slept for several days in Lindsey Graham's cock torture closet, which is surprisingly (laughs) comfortable, surprisingly comfortable, except for my cock. I got so desperate, people, I tried to talk to Ted Cruz in his office one day, but it turns out he's actually, he actually is 10,000 cockroaches in a skin suit. And um, honestly, a lot of the cockroaches on a one-to-one basis, very chill. It's just when they come together, big asshole. I think constantly of my QAnon friends. Wondering why they haven't come back for me. I thought we had a bond, Chewbacca. Where are you, 5G made me undateable, Greg? With a thou, Dan Dan the boner clown. I'm starting to think this revolution wasn't driven by ideals, but was just some excuse to have some big second bachelor party. But instead of strippers, we're trying to fuck the blind lady justice statue out front. I'm completely disillusioned. I'm starting to question whether Donald Trump is the bronze sex god that I was led to believe. Really regretting the full back tattoo of Trump acting out the volleyball scene from Top Gun, the first one, not Maverick, haven't seen it, been in the Capitol building. And if Trump is alive, <laughs> then maybe my primary news source, patriotslap.freedom slash KGB angel fire, isn't telling me the whole truth. Does the New York Times website feature GIF ads for herbal milk satisfier pills? That's how journalism is funded in this country, right? I'm being too loud. I have to go, but per- perhaps, let me confess one other thing. Perhaps worst of all, I was accidentally added to the Senate Finance Committee. Yes. <laughs> Where I wrote a bill that will fund Medicare for all for generations. God damn it. If I get free Medicare, Medicare for all for my friends and family for the rest of their lives, they will never forget. <laughs> I'm off, freedom fighters. I have to go lick Chuck Schumer's cream cheese container for food. The fight continues. 
All right, Justin Tyler, everybody. Woo! It was him. Simba. It was me all along. Uh, <laughs> in a, an elaborate awesome. costume. <laughs> Hell yeah. Oh, man. A true... Yes, there we go. Now, those are fun. I'm leaving them. I like, like them. I little, like them. Little brown tears. <laughs> oh, uh, man. Uh... I love it. So many, so many great details, great references to real, some real politicians in there. Yeah. Well, uh, you know, you got to bring the takes. Um, yes. I uh, just shout out a couple of comments real quick, quick. Phil Barton, huge fan of the show so far tonight. All right, Simba, what's happening? And I appreciate it because he's like, get me in here, man, uh, to say what he said earlier. I'm fucked up. Um, so he's just trying to keep up. Raisin Delta shouting out the urban insurrectionists. All my characters are urban versions of themselves. Uh, and um, and yeah, very fun. Someone is sharing. Renee is sharing. That's always mm. um, always fun. Uh, though, those are herbal milf satisfier pills for those um, in the comments wondering what uh, string of nonsense words I put together yeah, and consider uh -huh. to be a joke. I That's love it. me for you. <laughs> I got to say, uh, vintage, vintage Tyler. However, no one referred to their head as a bean, a noodle, or a noggin. So that totally takes you off Tyler Bingo there. Well, you know, I like to break out of my comfort zone. Uh huh. Very important. Uh, very important. That's why you know, that character was wearing a, a wig. Ah, good. <laughs> you know, because you can't feel like yourself. Otherwise, you're going to. You're gonna training. half ass. You're gonna. If what? That's what yeah. the acting training is all about. If I'm nothing, mm -hmm. I'm not a clown. That's why I have little brown circles on my cheeks. Mm -hmm. And as a clown, you have to be able to be a, a peeled grape, uh, taking in mm -hmm. all that society uh, has to offer, unfiltered. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The most sensitive people are the clowns. Absolutely, absolutely. That's they reflect us back at. They reflect the the us at back at you know us. All of us U.S. senators back at ourselves. That's so. <laughs> yes, mm -hmm. I know. I Here wish that's my dream job is to be as the Senate clown. Yeah, the, clown the that old, performs at the Senate. Let me tell you, when these, when all of the old Senate sees this, they will know. Yeah, they are big on live streams. A lot uh -huh. of them. Like Diane Feinstein is just really on that. Well, um, I'll just, tell you what is. Sorry, go ahead. No, you go. Well, I'll tell you what is a real find. Steen, is uh, we have found a picture of a slug with pecs. Can we please uh, uh, post that? Is that? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's Thomas. Did that's Thomas, Thomas that to That's Thomas according to his wife. Yeah, uh, that's a drawing. She had made that hangs so above their fireplace. The live rendition. Yeah, you know, you're, you know, your your 15th anniversary only comes along one time so you need to get something special very very special yeah it's beautiful that's mm -hmm. the uh caricature anniversary I mean. <laughs> yes yes everyone uh, you got to spend your 15th on a boardwalk somewhere. yeah definitely head out to uh the jersey shore on your 15th anniversary <laughs> your partner will thank you mm -hmm. uh two other quick things there was carly says there was no list um that's true all of my characters have lists that's true. Uh, that's true and um kathy l says was that a wig or a mask though great question that was a wig because a mat it was the mask was my face there was mm -hmm. no mask maskless uh, so it was definitely 100 percent a wig thomas whittington also in the comments I only hope that's how my wife sees me. Uh, <laughs> let's let's send that out. Let's send a framed uh, version of that out to out to the the Whittington Spira household. Hell yeah! <laughs> um, you know what? It's come time. Um, oh my we're god! We're down to we're down to our last character. No, no. Yes, no. It's All true. Right. I know you're not used to the rhythms of the show. Uh, perhaps no. because you, you've, you're rarely in a co-host seat, but that means that comedy has ended for the evening after this next okay. piece. Oh um, my so God. So it's time to, to tuck in, tuck in all your, your ha ha's and your uh, tickaloos. Uh, yep. And put them to bed. And take your dress off a chair. 
Take your yeah. dress off a chair, mm -hmm. get your um, uh, sleeveless shirt umbrella, and go for a walk. <laughs> Open your mouth and catch some Jaeger rain. <laughs> Yeah, I I actually will probably do that singing uh, Jaeger Raid, my favorite Prince song. Yeah. <laughs> um, and Jaeger, speaking of, I was thinking of November Rain is my the one I was going with because I have bad taste. <laughs> um, yeah, let's talk about our, our talk about, one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, here, you know what? I thought you crushed that last one. Oh, Why thank you, you so it? much. Oh, we do I have think... to sort of define this word a little bit. Um, this oh, next yeah. character. Um, is it, someone who exoticizes the West. Mm, ex the West. Exoticizes the West. I love it. Um, that's great. So uh, knowing that, why don't you uh, uh, please welcome to the stage an Occidentalist. Woo! Uh, oh, we can't muted. hear you. We can't hear you. It's okay. That's okay. Hey, <laughs> sorry about that. Um, I had a cold, but thank you for coming to my housewarming party. Come in, come <laughs> in. I know this apartment here in Tokyo is so spacious. I was lucky to get it for such a low price before I took a trip to the West. Ooh, I know. So exotic. Okay. So let me tell you about my travels in the Occident. First, I started out in the far west, in a cute little town in Idaho, United States. I don't really remember <laughs> the name of the town. Honestly, they all kind of just sound the same to me, uh, like Boise, Burley, Haley, Des Moines. I, I really can't tell them apart, but it was so cool. I ended up actually going through, um, going there at a very, very sacred and very holy holiday. Uh, the people referred to as um, Labor Day. Uh, all of the people <laughs> were off from work and they were celebrating with traditional foods like the, uh, what's it called? The um, uh, the salty beef organ sticks, what, uh, the hot dogs. Oh my God, it was <laughs> amazing. Oh, oh my gosh, we're still standing. Please, please sit down. I'll bring over some coffee. I hope you don't mind that I prepare it the Western way. Uh, lots of cream with very little coffee. I learned the <laughs> recipe when I went to the town of Boston and I visited a local cafe there they called Dunkin' Donuts. I know here we just drink it black, but you know, that's what I love about travel. You really just experience different ways of life and oh, it's just beautiful. Here you go. <laughs> so anyway, after Boston, I made my way to the South. And uh, where in the South? Um, I thought it was just all one place. I didn't... <laughs> anyway, I visited a traditional South United States restaurant called Golden Corral, where they practice an ancient custom of food service known as buffets. It's like mounds of food in the center of the eating space. And you just have to like walk up there and pick up your own food. It's really a beautiful practice that I think harkens back to our roots of hunting and gathering. And really, I didn't do any research on this. I just assumed based off of the 30 minutes I experienced the custom, but it sounds right. Oh, and before <laughs> I forget, I got you a present. This is an exquisite bottle of ranch from the Hidden Valley region. <laughs> just have a glass of this with your next meal. And oh. oh, and you know what was interesting? Surprisingly, a lot of United States people still wear their traditional dress and actually got a little a little garment for myself. Wait, let me let me go get it. I mean, look at that. Look at that. <laughs> it's just like I mean, I don't even know how to wear it, but I just like got it, you know. Like, I'm, like, what is that? Like, I don't like this. Like, <laughs> oh my god! And you know how much I love learning languages. I picked up some of the local lingo. Okay, get her done. That means where's the bathroom? <laughs> I know. I sound just like one of them. But no, aside from food and clothing, I just, I just love how diverse. The United States culture is like it's so diverse, except in their government, and everyone has a really <laughs> unique perspective that they bring to the table, except in their government. 
But yeah, you know, after visiting the United States, I went a little less west and, you know, I visited England and, oh, this is going to blow your mind. Did you know that England literally translates to land of the Ang? <laughs> I don't know, but the Ang people were so lovely. And over there, I learned that there are multiple forms of Christianity. Yeah, I had no idea. <laughs> there are Catholics, there are Protestants, Lutheranians, Evangelians. It's just so fascinating. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, all those people just look the same to me, you know? Oh, you know what I'm gonna do for Halloween this year? I'm gonna wear a cute little Pope hat put a little ash on my forehead. And when people ask me what I am, I'll be like, I'm a wasp. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Farshad Kansari, everybody. Thank you for doing that piece. That was very fun. Oh, yeah. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Uh, that's uh, Occidentalist, definitely a word I'm like, I know what that means. I'm like, nope, I don't. Uh, mm -hmm. So I'm glad you defined it when you said it over to us. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. It's basically like the Orient and then like the Occident is like right. the Western. I kind of see. Yeah, yeah. Wow. Yeah. Um, I, love, Often, I love a piece like that that is so uh, like it doesn't ever give away like the burn. It just is. Um, mm -hmm. I feel like mm -hmm. those are the pieces that I think really, really leave you with something. Wait, what, what, give away the burn? What, what like mean? you're, you don't ever say like, you don't ever have like the gotcha moment. I think. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. You're, yeah. You're just like, you're just doing it the whole time. You're being it, you're embodied. Yeah. And I, I always love pieces where someone puts a glove on their head. Yeah. That's like, yeah. So between the two of us, that was, yeah. <laughs> that was a, yeah. It's the only where piece you... of memo I own. <laughs> and, well let me ask where why do you have those did you buy them for the piece or are you uh just disguising your hands in the in the woods no i just i just needed a pair of gloves and these are water resistant mm. and i was like oh, i'll get i got these like i don't know five six years ago i don't know oh they look under worn i don't know how yeah. many times you put them yeah on. it's because i left them here when i moved away i moved abroad and then i didn't i didn't bring them with me so i'm like oh i better use them um but uh, where are you coming to us from uh tokyo uh japan yeah oh you really are in tokyo oh wow no 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 i was i moved back to oh. new york oh, oh, a couple of years ago um, and then there's a pandemic, so I like never left my house. So like these gloves will never be worn. Yeah. <laughs> Forever a prop. Forever so a prop. you live you lived in Tokyo for a year? For four years. For four Holy years. shit. Wow. Oh, can we curse? Uh, I've been cursing. <laughs> yes. Okay, great. Uh, <laughs> that's the curse confetti. Um, what were you doing over there? Uh, I don't know. I just, I just wanted to like live abroad. I lived in France before and I was like, oh, it's all kind of like Western culture. Uh, I'm Middle Eastern, but like I, it was really hard to like live there. So I went for like East Asia and spent two years teaching English, then had a string of odd jobs and ended up at a tech startup. But my favorite odd job was when I made chocolate from scratch, like from the cacao bean. I was like peeling cacao beans and grinding it into bars Whoa. of chocolate. Yeah, yeah. Oh my God. That's awesome. That sounds amazing. What's like the thing that we wouldn't know about chocolate, about making it like from scratch that we would want to know? The thing you wouldn't know is that chocolate, it's just, it's just chocolate and sugar. Like it's just the cacao bean and sugar and you just got to put it in a really fast blender we use like an industrial blender but really and that that's it it's like very easy you wow. can make it in your house yeah so i could be making chocolate right i'm yeah. in the kitchen i'm right there i just need some cacao just need some cacao you have some just on your face oh yeah you could do little cacao dots <laughs> little two cacao. little beans yeah. um, you know i so i but, oh sorry um yeah. Uh, I kind of learned that about speaking of sugar and what it can do during the pandemic. Uh, I like missed smoked salmon. So I wasn't around here. And then I learned that like most smoked salmon is not actually smoked. It's just cured. So you just take a 
uh, a salmon and you wrap it in salt and sugar in the right amount and it will taste like the smoked salmon that you know. And that's yeah. what sugar can do. <laughs> that's the power of sugar. So did you, have you been doing that a lot? I did it. I did it a few times. And then uh, I was living at my uh, girlfriend's parents' place and they didn't like that. They didn't like having a three pound salmon just rot right. in their fridge for a few days. So uh, also she, my girlfriend wouldn't eat it. I decided that everything I made, I had to eat myself. So I stopped doing it. So you're eating like a side of salmon. I mean, that is, it's a wild thing to get in a fight with your girlfriend's parents. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The anyway. fish, you still dating the fish guy? The big old salmon guy? <laughs> she is though. She's yeah, that's good. Right that's in good. There. They must be they must be so happy. Uh -huh. Um uh Farshad, do you have anything you want to plug on the show? Um, sure. Yes. Uh, I'm on a, uh, sketch team, uh, called Big Apartment. Um, and we're having, uh, a best of show. Uh, we've only been together five months, but we already think we've put out the best stuff we could. So we're having a best of show on Monday at, um, Love the confidence. Asylum. Where is it? At Asylum? At Asylum. Yeah. If you're new. Oh yeah. What time? 9.30 PM optimal, uh, theater viewing time on a Monday. <laughs> That's great. That's industry yeah. night right there. Yeah. Uh, bring out the real heads. Well, awesome. Uh, check that out. Thanks for doing the show. And I'm Thank you for having me. Soon. It was so Come back fun. with another piece. Will do. See ya. Thank you. Yeah. Johnny B, that's it. That's the show. We've done it. That's it? Oh, my God. I got to go back to reality after this? Yeah, you got to go back to uh, your book collection, your giant triangle of books. And uh -huh. um, really trying to crack that uh, slug with pecs New Yorker cartoon. <laughs> I'm going to do my best. Yeah, I'm going to I'm gonna really, you know, I'm going to make an espresso and I'm just going to go at it. Oh, nice. Great. Mm -hmm. Just the hour here on the East Coast for an espresso. Uh, shout out to Phil Barton, who's been riding with us the whole show. And wants more. He says, that it? In his comment, Phil, come <laughs> back. We do this every Wednesday at 8 p.m. And Phil, honestly, wasn't that enough? Look what we, we, we did so much. Uh, we talked about Airbud. I'm wearing some uh, poorly placed facial makeup. Um, we'll be back here next week uh, to do more. Um, you can hit us up at the business Venmo um, if you want to throw us some cash for any of the folks here. Um, who entertained you and uh, don't Google Airblood Jorge, why don't you pop in here? Say what's up. Uh, mm -hmm. Thanks for bringing that slug with pecs, which is you just took Hell a yeah. photo of your um, your back tattoo, right? <laughs> I did. Yeah, that is that is my that's my lower back. Mm -hmm. Nice. Um, speaking uh, yeah. of my lower back, can I show you my front back? Yeah. Please. What? <laughs> uh, I, I loved how you brought up Jaeger rain. This is a photo I just took of above my bed. That 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 has been there. <laughs> that yes. stays that stays above me at all times. Mm -hmm. uh, and and then my girlfriend drew a mustache on Prince's face. So, ah, and let me say, uh, Jorge does a killer Prince. Stop. If it's not obvious, he um, is mm -hmm. a fan and um, is known as a, a bit of a karaoke head, right? A little Ooh. bit, yeah. I've uh, I've been I've been a karaoke host for like ten years, which is a weird flex, uh, yeah. but uh, it's it's given me a lot of time to really hone that craft of okay singing, <laughs> passable. Yeah, singing. <laughs> it's right in the name, karaoke. Karaoke, uh, it's okay. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> also, hi Stevie. Uh, uh, shouts to Stevie in the comments. Uh, Phil Barton coming back next week. That's what we call a fan, lifelong fan. Hell yeah. Bring him in. Tell yes. your friends. We'll be here. We got more live shows coming up. We just had one this past Sunday in New York. Um, more videos on the YouTube, um, which many of you are watching on, or you can head to our TikTok as well, which has a bunch of two, uh, two videos a week at least. Uh, special thanks to Johnny Bander here uh, coming out for some Bander banter all night long. Uh, check out his pieces on the YouTube. They are very good. And folks, we will see you next week. Kick a bye. Bye.